Welcome to Saturday Shop Tours. I'm Carl. I'm Michaela. This week we're in Savannah, Georgia, visiting DIY father and daughter duo Atomic Dairy. Let's, Let's get started. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. We feature a new maker every week. Also, be sure to subscribe to Chuck and Hannah's YouTube channel, Atomic Dairy. Link in the description below. In addition to in-depth build videos for all the shop projects featured in our tour, you'll find dozens of cool DIY projects for your home. Thanks again, Chuck. Hi, I'm Chuck Walden. Welcome to my shop. But yeah, this is, this is where we do everything. And everything is modular because we never know what we're gonna build. It might be a dog food dispenser like that is. It may be a piece of furniture. It might be, um, well, for example, next month, did you, have you ever seen the meme where there's somebody had a T-Rex skeleton out in front of a museum and somebody went and stuffed flamingos into it? Have you ever seen that meme? <laughs> and the meme is, be careful, it's flamingo season, they'll, they'll strip a T-Rex in 20 seconds. And that's the meme. So we're going to build a 15 foot tall T-Rex skeleton and put flamingos in it and put it right in front of the house and put a Santa hat on it to get around the HOA. <laughs> so. I have some extremely enthusiastic buddies uh, who are like, yes, so uh, that's one of the things. So if we're gonna build a T-Rex skeleton or whatever else, everything's on wheels and I can push everything around. Um, you see in the video, this folds up and can disconnect and, and, um, and can move around the shop and everything um, so that we can, we can reconfigure as needed for whatever it is we're building. Right now, I've just finished building, I built a couch for the back porch that's four chairs um, that come together in an L-shaped couch, and I just did two lounge chairs that go with it, also out of two by fours. And the, the couch has flip-up side uh, things that, that you can, we just, we just tiled the kitchen, and so I had a bunch of tiles left over. And so I made flip-up shelves on the side, so if you wanna do something, and it's all in the video, well, the two lounge chairs have two of those that flip up, and they're right there. So if I'm working with tile or whatever else, I can, I can push things around and, um, and make it all, configure this to how I need it. Uh, we have a fold-out, have you seen our fold-out paint booth? Um, yep. and, uh, and what we do is we, we open this window and uh, start this motor and it pulls the, the paint right out of here. And as you know, living here, how many bugs are there outside? And so if you go outside and paint, all the bugs land on what you just painted. So this allows us to, um, to paint whatever we want. And I can leave it sitting here, and this intake here takes the air right out of, out of here. So I can, I can put something up to paint it and leave it for three or four days. Um, it's not in anybody's way. And um, we did make one mistake though. This is our paint locker. <laughs> so we're gonna swap the junk in this one with the paint in this one. This is our paint, we can get to this, but if it's any of the other paint, we're kind of out of luck if we didn't plan ahead. So we, uh, we're gonna swap our paint out, but um, but that's what this is, and it's got a it's got a um, a little turntable here. We can put on this Velcro and spin the work around. Um, I can flip this up, and um, and so I can, uh, you know, keep it semi dust free um, and so forth. Whatever it is we need to do, but if we don't need it, it just folds up completely out of the way, like it was never here, and it's only a couple of inches thick. And these are just chunks of things that we use to to put things we're painting on. They're just Coke cans and, and they're sacrificial. Um, but that's all this is. And it works really well. Um, the, the table saw, it's just a, a regular, I'll unplug it since I'm doing things with it. Um, it's just a regular table saw, but I built, I built this table for it and it just drops its sawdust straight down. And I just emptied it last week, but this will fill up with sawdust there's, so we don't have any suction or anything on it. The sawdust just falls straight out of the bottom of the saw and we sealed up the inside of the saw mostly so that the sawdust falls down. But if we're doing something large, we can wheel this right outside if we want to or we can here, we can do this and put this out feed table up. And so I just, I just, I have four times the space now, there on this saw and it's completely mounted on wheels. So I can, I can handle fairly large cuts um, or side cuts or whatever else on this, on this cheap saw. And then when it's done, I just take it and just put it back here and it's out of the way. Um, and we built this stuff 
all of our projects and all of our tools out here, we built because we had a need to. Um, well, this, this is too small to cut a four by eight sheet, so we need, a, we need a wing. Well, how can we build something cool? And um, we see all these stickers, all these stickers mean things. Um, but for years, Hannah loved to go to Moe's. She has, she's done with Moe's. Um, but when she went to Statesboro, there's a giant Moe's there and she ate there her first year and she said, I've had enough. But that's what I was most eager because a lot of our stuff was designed sitting at Moe's, drawing it out and everything, including stuff like this. Um, things. And as she's gone to engineering classes, she's gotten way better than me at it. I'm trying to find if I've got, yeah. Um, when we built the Dremel station, which is that cabinet over there that holds our Dremel. Uh, the Dremel is not here right now because she took it with her when she went, but uh, this is our, um, this is all of our Dremel stuff. We could never use the Dremel because we always lost all the parts. We found the Dremel, but we couldn't find the, the bits or vice versa or whatever. So we decided we're just gonna make this. So Hannah sat down and did actual engineering drawings and designed this, you know, like a grown up would. <laughs> and, and so we actually had plans. Look at all this. We actually had plans for all this. And that's, this stuff usually sits right here because it's, it's a place of honor that we, and this is, this is another thing that we're working on that we're designing. Um, uh, you ever been to Disney to the uh, Rainforest Cafe where they've got the animal egg stools? Mm -hmm. That's our design for animal egg stools. Um, uh, that's one of our kitchen stools and you see it's, it's been trashed. The other two kitchen stools that are in there are on their way out because in about a month or so we're going to build animal egg stools and this is the design. So, so she draws this stuff up and, and we build it. Uh, she also drew up a lot of this. Um, everything in here has a name. Hannah gives names to things. This is called the fanboy. But when we started designing it, we realized it looked like a jet engine. And my dad flew, and, um, and it looks like the jet engine specifically of a Navy plane called the Viking. And so we went out and we decided to make it look like a jet engine. And when it runs, it sounds like a jet engine, but it cleans the air in here. And you always get dust in a shop, but it was really bad out here until we put this in. And this thing really does a great job cleaning the air. And um, it's, it's pretty powerful and it does the job really nicely. So. Um, but it's so loud out here, we had to go back and retrofit a red light on the bottom because we're like, did you draw the fan? I don't remember. So this tells us if it's running. Um, and, uh, but it's, it's been, this thing is fantastic. And it's designed so that we'll work out here in the shop and we'll just leave this running for a couple hours. And it, it really does a great job of cleaning the air. I still have dust, every wood shop does, but it's not like it was. But that's that, the paint booth. Um, these, since we film out here, we put these, um, these panels on and we just, you just pull them off and we made them look like um, shutters from the front of the house. And so we put them out there and anything that moves in the shop, we put this tape on. Uh, so that, you know, because a lot of times, well, this we haven't, but um, a lot of these things are different places and it's just to help catch your eye. And so we, we, that's kind of our standard if it moves. And in the Navy, if you ever tour a Navy ship, a museum ship, you'll see this. Um, and what this means is a Z is zebra. If they go to battle stations, that hatch is gonna be closed. And um, so battle stations means all the condition zebra is all, the, all those hatches are closed for watertight integrity and that sort of thing. If it is an exterior thing where you can see outside, it's called dog zebra. So they'll do condition dog zebra at night because you don't wanna light your ship up at night. Um, and so I put the dog zebra and I made a mistake. I made these zebra and when I posted the video, a bunch of Navy guys came back who all assumed that I was in the Navy and I was never in the Navy. Um, my dad was, um, and I was, I was corrected. So we put the dog zebra stickers up, but that one has zebra on it. Cause that's correct. Cause that's not an exterior, <laughs> but it's amazing what people do when they, they look at your videos. You're like, I saw this. And there are people who zoom in on these stickers and try to figure out, uh, different things. And these are, these are things from our history. Um, some YouTube channels we, we, um, we follow. My wife has uh, Brown Eyes, and Brown Eyed Girl is, is one of her songs. So I have, a, I have um, an HTML version. This is the code for brown on, so Brown Eyed Girl. And, and um, I drove a Datsun in high school. Um, you know, we did a lot of, um, when I, I, we were stationed in the Philippines for years when I was in junior high, and that was, it was all Japanese robots. That was the big thing over there, so I have a lot of that. This is the 501st um, sticker. These are the bad guys. The Rebel Legion that I'm in is over there, the good guys. Uh, but everything here is just something from my history or uh, a squadron or base that we were stationed at or, or whatever else. 
Um, I've got college stickers for my daughters and so forth. And we just, we just started adding stickers and we'll keep doing it. Now we got this big white wall over here. So <laughs> we may, we never showed this because it was ugly, but now, um, but now this is, this is really great. Um, we can use the back of the shop. Usually we just pile our junk here and we film from here. And now we can actually use this space. So we've got the French cleat coming back here and we can hang stuff where we want and we can reconfigure these however we, we, we want them reconfigured. And because um, uh, we don't know what we're gonna be building. But most of the things have a name. Um, that's the fanboy. Um, this miter table is called the green beetle for obvious reasons. It's, it's not green and it's not a beetle. So obviously Hannah wanted to call it green beetle. So this is the green beetle and it has um, uh, the miter saw. It currently does not have any kind of um, dust collection. It just drops it on the floor down there. So that's a, an upcoming project is to actually make this work properly, but we use this like crazy and it's designed so that we can, we can drop it and you'll see me in the videos. We just take the wood and just put it down here out of the way. Um, and this two step thing is great. This is where we keep our screws. This is where we keep our nails and, um, and we can take the drawer right out and walk around with it if we need to go somewhere. Um, and, uh, it's been really helpful. Um, we've got this right here. This is, um, a rockler piece that you can set the, the length of whatever you're gonna do. And I used to fly a lot of model rockets, like really big ones. And uh, this is a launch rail for model rockets. The reason it's blackened is that's from the fire from the rockets that launched on it. So this is, this is another piece of our history. Um, so this helps us a lot. We'll set these and you'll see us, um, you know, cutting multiple things and chopping them. And then after you cut the wood, your sanders are right here. You just reach down and you grab the sander and go and, and it's good. Um, we have that workbench, but that one has been tied to the wall for years and we hadn't been able to move it. Now we can, but while that was still tied to the wall, we built this one. This is just a short one. This is great for furniture building. Um, and it's just a little cart that we move around and we beat it to death. The top is sacrificial so we can replace it. And this is named Cardi McCartface. <laughs> and so Cardi McCartface. Um, we have used to build just about any furniture you see us build, we do it on here because it gets it up where you can reach it, but it's too low for a lot of other things we do. But Cardi just goes underneath the green beetle when it's not, um, when it's not in use and it doesn't take up space that we need. And we can also, we store scrap wood in there. Um, and we've got a couple of scrap wood bins. You saw the stuff in there. We've, we're moving the scrap wood out of the shop because we need more tools. But so that's what this is. Um, let's see. This is called the old switcheroo. Um, it has multiple tools on it. It's, uh, it pulls out and we have uh, one of our favorite tools, our Craig jig, um, that uh, this is a version four. The version five has got the thing in front, so I'm behind the times, but that's okay. Um, yeah, we use pocket holes on it, and so I put these on. So we say, um, because we've added these wings, that the five has and the four doesn't, we call this our 4.5 jig because it's sort of like the other one. Um, but uh, so anyway, this is our, uh, our belt sander stuff. We got another belt sander handheld down there, but this is our belt sander that we can do things. And I don't have a thing on the disc right here, but underneath is our grinder and our router. And so if we want to use those, let's see if I can get it to behave. Um, we release these, um, and we just flip it. And so now we have our router, or if we want to, our grinder, all covered in sawdust. But, um, but this allows us to have one, two, three, four tools in this little tiny space here. And we can push this around where we want. And we can connect this to our um, dust recovery, which is this. And I have forgotten the name she gave this one. Um, but this is, um, this is our um, dust collector we use on our, on our mobile tools. And it's, it's, a, it's not a very powerful vacuum, but it's sufficient for things like the, the router. And it has a dust separator here. So 99% of the stuff goes in here and never goes into the filter. We're big, big fans of these um, dust separators. And there's a better one called the Dust Deputy, but it's this tall and I can't fit that, so we went with the low profile. And since it moves, we put the yellow and black tape on it. But the great thing about this is this. Um, what you do is you plug your tool in, and when I use my tool, it turns the vacuum on. When I stop using my tool, it waits about three or five seconds and it stops the vacuum. 
So it's, it's um, uh, so I'll hook this up and when I turn this switch on, the vacuum comes on, when I turn the switch off, they both shut off. And I don't have to go back and forth to the vacuum. Plus it's completely mobile and we can push it around. We built a larger version of this that we use for our big shop back that's parked over there because it's out of the shop. But this is the one that we hook up to our tools. Um, and this, for whatever reason, people started watching this and it's got a, a huge number of views. Um, and, but it's, it's been really helpful. And um, this is when we started building stuff out of two by fours because two by fours are, are cheap. I guess not anymore because all lumber is more expensive, but they're still cheaper than most of the lumber. So we started using two by fours to build things and we've had good success with it. And uh, we can chop it on the saw and shape it. But, uh, but if I don't need it, I can push it out of the way. and configure it how I want. And I have no trouble at all pushing it where I need it. Um, we use the flight deck helmets. Um, these two were eBay. This is my father's flight deck helmet that he, that he used when he was aboard the USS Constellation in Vietnam. He, he uh, was in attack squadron 27, which is still stenciled across the top. You can't really see it, but he, he wore this as a pilot when he had to go out on the flight deck. And we, I used to use this all the time, and, uh, but it's 50 plus years old. Um, so now I, we got some eBay versions and every color on the flight deck means something. Um, red means ordnance, um, explosive. So I use red plus I'm an X-wing pilot and I wanted red. So I put the Rebel Legion thing on the back. <laughs> See, <laughs> um, but this is Hannah's and uh, she likes the reflective stuff on it. Um, but she calls these our hats. And so we wear our hats when we, when we do work, and these are extraordinarily effective at cutting noise. We also have dust masks, um, and uh, we have various types of dust masks. This is Hannah's, this is mine. Hannah's is newer, so it's cleaner, but uh, so whenever we're out here working, we throw the mask on, we throw the hearing protection on, even if it's a small job, because over time, that's cumulative damage to your hearing or your lungs, and so we try to keep it as safe as possible out here, so we, um, keep all that going. This is a device that mostly worked, um, but also doesn't. So it's not currently hooked up, but this is the fanboy controller. It's designed to when it hears a saw run, it turns on this um, air cleaner and, and runs for two hours. Um, and if you hit the saw again, it just adds, goes back to two hours. And the code all works and everything, but the microphone picks up um, car doors closing. And once it picked up the dog barking. And so we have some other things we're going to do with it. And it's a, it, this is actually a prototype. It's in a wooden box, which is astoundingly dangerous with, with 110 volt power. It's just a prototype. It's not hooked up now. We have a metal box in the electronics lab. This, we're gonna rebuild this and try a couple of different things. And one of the things is we, um, we made a mistake when we ordered some resistors and we got, we got 500 um, light detecting resistors that we didn't need. Um, but now we do. So the next version is going to have a light detector. So if the lights in here are on and it hears a noise, then it should turn this on. If it hears a noise and the lights are off, that's fake. Don't turn it on. So, so we'll, we'll try that. But this, the, the idea is that this is supposed to run after, because this dust is floating all over the place and I don't need to be here. So, um, so it all goes, um, so this will run for some time and it does a circular motion around the shop and it really does um, cut it out. The clean air comes out the back and it does a really great job. One of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna move this a little further back because we've, we've put our painting booth in the dark, which was stupid. <laughs> we're painting in the dark all the time. So we're gonna move this back about a foot and we built the puzzle table that has the panels that come out. Well, we built the first one with three panels, but they were too big and heavy for my wife to move. So we took those panels away and Hannah chopped one up and built a table out of it. We still have two of them. So we're gonna move this back and we're gonna hang one of those panels right here. We just, the stuff that we used to do. And if you remember in the video for the, uh, for the table, um, Hannah has a pizza that she wants to eat and Donna has her lightsaber and she cuts the pizza. So there's our prop from that, <laughs> from, from where Donna cut the pizza in half. Um, so um, Hannah identifies with, we can do it. Um, the, uh, it's in all the things she does. She's made a, a light box she takes to school with and everything else. Um, that uh, being a female engineer, she's the only female in most of her classes. Um, she is constantly being told, you're not gonna make it here. And look at what she's done. 
And, and she's, she's showing up and doing these amazing things and wiring these things. And people are looking at her saying, well, you don't belong here, but she does. So she did all that. So that's, that's our ode to Hannah. In fact, she recently, I'm not allowed to show it. She won't let me, but, but she posed for this picture. So we have Hannah posed like this, wearing that. It's awesome. You have to take my word for it. And we decided when we started doing videos, we're really not grownups here. And, and, and we, we kid around and joke around all the time. And we decided that we were just gonna be us. And, and we were just gonna be, this is what we're doing because we can. And you know, we're wiring it this way because blinking lights. We need no other reason. And so we're very frank with that. And it turns out it's, it's pretty funny, especially Hannah. I don't, I'm not as good as Hannah. And, um, and, and people like the humor. We don't stop the video to do humor. Well, we did on the secret door, but hey, we had a stormtrooper. But um, we, we try not to stop it, but we'll throw in comments. So we try to be funny and um, we try to be practical. We don't have expensive tools um, like this. This is just a regular Ryobi drill press. There's nothing terribly special about it. I built these, um, these little lights to, to add in. Um, we used to, when we were out here, we just used that light up there. And when we put in these LED lights, we went from uh, 1300 lumens to 13,000 lumens when you put these, and this is $50 worth of lights, so we were very pleased. We never have to do lighting out here when we're shooting. We can just shoot. This is the best lit room in the house. Um, and we didn't realize how much in the dark we had been before. But when we worked in the dark, I built these. <laughs> so we could see what we were doing. We were on the, on the drill press, but it's just your basic drill press. And this is called the spinny boy. That's what Hannah calls it, the spinny boy. And it has all of our drilling parts. It's got our drill, drill bits and everything. We keep our, um, we keep our corded um, drills and our uh, jigsaws down here. Um, and this used to be where I put our charger thing, but then I built this charging station. This is our second one. The first one had three drills. And, um, and I, I did not know the magic of the impact drivers, how wonderful these are. Um, and I got one of these and I said, we must display this in an appropriate place. So, um, so we, uh, we put it here. And um, so now we've got four of these. And this may seem like a lot of drills, but when we do a job, we'll have a drill. Um, we'll use one of these bits like the countersink um, and then the screwdriver. And so instead of swapping things out, you just go drill, drill, drill. And, and a lot of times you'll see me and Hannah using different drills to, to do our thing. So we, uh, we do this. The first one had three, this one has four. And it, we put our drill bits in here because this didn't really work out that well. Um, and then we got our larger bits on these magnetic things on the side. So all of our drill stuff's right here and, um, and we can get to it. But there's been some incidents lately. Some of the forums have had people post where these chargers, not these particular ones, but just chargers in general, it's not safe to leave them plugged in and charging because these lithium ion batteries can go and, and there's been some fires. And so we are talking about redesigning this. And of course, we're probably gonna expand it, but, um, but put a timer on it um, so that you dial in you know, two hours and it will shut off power automatically. And, um, and that way you've got peace of mind. Just like with the fanboy, mm -hmm. with the controller turning it off after it finishes its air cleaning job um, to automate some of these processes to make the shop a little safer. And the exciting, we call this the electronics lab. So what we did was we built ourselves a film set and we only shoot inside the gray. <laughs> so people think it's really cool, it's just a wall. But what we do is if we, if we saw, like this is one of the upcoming projects for this month, this is a triple kaleidoscope I'm building. Cool. And, um, and these, are the, these are the optics and this, um, I'll be finishing this this next week. Um, I'm also building a, um, a stand for our 3D printer, which a couple of the 501st people um, upgraded and sold us to it very cheaply. They, they printed an entire Mandalorian helmet on that in one piece. Uh, and I was very impressed. So, but anyway, this is also where to my editing. Um, so, and this is Junkbot. This Hannah built this. This is, uh, this is our, our robot that... <laughs> and there's two chairs because me and Hannah sit here and we'll solder and that's my soldering station. This is our hot glue and everything. So we pull out what we need and in the, in the closet, and there's, there's, there's all my AV equipment. Isn't it advanced? <laughs> um, and we have uh, bins in the, um, in the closet that we, you know, we'll label as here's the bin for this project and we pull it out and we, um, we work on it. We can put it all back in. Um, that's the uh, body for my R2D2 right there. Um, that is slowly coming along. So we've got, so we, we try to make everything modular to keep from destroying the house. So we'll, we'll pull a project out, work out it, and then we can box it and put it back and pull another project out. 
and I'm trying to get ahead on videos. I was ahead two videos. Now I'm, I should have put a video out today and I'm not. It'll go up tomorrow because I'm behind. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so when we're, when we're talking about, um, when we're talking about indoor type stuff, usually soldering electronics, in this case, stained glass, um, for the, for the kaleidoscope, it's really not practical to do this outside in the garage because the garage gets super hot, super cold, and it's dusty and everything. But in here, we can, we can set this up and, uh, and build whatever we want. And this is just a fold up table. We can, we can slide the top off and remove this table. And, um, but we keep all of our stuff right here and, uh, and we angle the camera where you are right there. So we get all of this. And the number one comment I've gotten is the space 1999 Eagle. There's people who love, who recognize, that 1973 sci-fi show, and I get all these comments on the eagle. So I, I can't, my, my youngest daughter cleaned up in here and we had to put the eagle back because people are like, where'd the eagle go? So we had to put it back. Um, but we try to shoot just this area right here and then we'll, we'll show whatever we're doing and we'll do a hands or a, a downward view on this. And this is a sacrificial tabletop. If we trash it, we can just build another one because it just slides on top of the other table. But, um, and that's our smaller atomic dairy sign. We chose the name Atomic Dairy because it doesn't mean anything. And so <laughs> what happened, we went to a maker show down, or maker fair down in Orlando, which is amazing. And, and there's all these people doing stuff down there. And, um, and it's like Fred's woodworking, Sam's woodworking, woodcraft. And, and we're like, we need to be different. And so we started looking for different names and we decided that if we chose Atomic Dairy, we could say, well, do you know what happens at Atomic Dairy? And neither do we. So if we build a kaleidoscope or a rocket or a robot, that's perfectly acceptable on, on Atomic Dairy because nobody knows what it is. Plus it's all, uh, the artwork's all Jetson stuff. And the guy that designed this is an animator on Star Trek Lower Decks. Um, and he's, um, he's an X-Wing pilot in the uh, Rebel Legion. And so he and I march in the Dragon Con parade every year in front of 100,000 people in our orange suits yelling, you know, for the Alliance and everybody cheers back and it's great. But um, so this gives us a way to tear things down. Um, and this is, that's some of Hannah's writing, some, some of the schematics that she was working on. Um, that is the schematic for um, this table that's next to my chair in there. The coasters, um, are chilled. The coasters automatically, or well, not, you flip them on and the coasters will, um, will cool your drink for you. And so she had to figure out how to get the heat sinks and the fans and everything else running off a single switch. So she drew that up and figured out how it was gonna work. And then she sat here and wired it. And we got it working and it worked for a day and it broke. So we gotta figure out what's wrong. But we, we often do maintenance on these things because when you build it, you then have to maintain it. And um, a lot of our stuff's experimental and we, we learn how to do this or that and uh, we'll often change the design in the middle of it or we'll make a mistake and we'll trash something and then make that part of the design because you know what's a what's a techno desk supposed to look like nobody knows so we uh we do whatever we want and say yeah that that's what we meant to do yeah see isn't that great <laughs> so anyway this is this is what we're doing here um my dad was a pilot uh in the navy he uh, he he joined the navy on a dare um, it was 1957 and a Navy recruiter landed a light plane on the quad at their school um, at a small college here in uh, Georgia. He was studying animal husbandry because he grew up on a dairy farm and he was, which has nothing to do with this name. I just realized that's a connection. It's not, but, um, and uh, his best friend dared him to sign up for the Navy. And so he did. And when the bus came to pick him up, his best friend was not on the bus. <laughs> but he, he went in and he flew, um, he flew off the Enterprise, the Intrepid and the Constellation. He was part of the Cuban blockade during the Cuban Missile Crisis on the Enterprise, and that's from the Enterprise. And, um, and he flew 300 combat missions in Vietnam in an A-7. So there's a lot of Navy stuff, which is why we wear the flight deck helmets, because we have them. And they're really, really great in the shop. And um, plus we hit our heads a lot of time with the wood, so that protects our heads with the armored helmet. So anyway. Thanks for watching. Please click here to head over to Atomic Dairy for more awesome content.